Yes, hello everyone and welcome to our West Australian football fans to another edition of Around the Waffle. Here we go. The season is finally upon us. It begins tonight. Under lights at Pentanet Stadium, round one Easter long weekend, and it's going to be an absolute banger weekend of football, we promise you that. Tonight, we are here to preview round one, the opening round of the season, and we've got a lot of great stuff in store for you today, but also for the rest of the season, so stay tuned on your go-to Waffle Podcast for season 2024. Paul Persick with you in the studio alongside me, Ethan Roth. Ethan, can you feel it? Round one is in the air. It's finally here, mate. It's felt like a long time coming, but tonight's the night, and I uh, can't Wait, it's only a couple, a few hours away. So history is going to be made for tonight. West Perth and Claremont. But also coming up in just a moment, we're going to be chatting to East Fremantle vice captain Kyle Baskerville. Of course, the Sharks beginning their premiership defence with a grand final rematch against Peel Thunder. This is around the waffle. Your go-to WAFL podcast in 2024. Punt from fifty. Win. Little too into the game. Win. Too cocky? Nah, almost a win. Risking it all for the glory. Win. It's win-win at the Waffle. Great footy, food and entertainment. Find out more at waffle.com.au. Okay, our first guest for the 2024 season is, of course, from the reigning premiers, East Fremantle. What a great game this man had in the grand final last year and also last season. The vice captain of the Sharks, he wears the number 13. It was lucky for him last year. Will it be again? Kyle Baskerville, he's good enough to join us on Around the Waffle. G'day, Kyle. Welcome along. First guest to Around the Waffle for 2024. How excited are you for the season to begin? Hey, Paul. Hey, Ethan. How are you? Going well. Great well, to have you on the show. How pumped up are you and uh, and the team for the season to begin? Yeah, look, we're really excited. Uh, I think we've had a really strong pre-season. We've uh, come back in really good nick, and it's always nice to get out of the, the pre-season fixtures and, and running around on the track and, and leading into round one. So we're looking forward to Saturday coming up and, and first and field. I'm sure, uh, yeah, bursting some other players rather than your own will uh, no doubt uh, be satisfying. But uh, Bryn Tico, we know big rucks don't grow on trees, elite rucks of the competition. Um, what's it been like having someone of Bryn's calibre back at the club this year? Yeah, it's, it's been great. Look, we've over the off-season, we've lost Hugh Dixon to Southport Tart. So uh, Hugh's going, oh, sorry, Bryn's going to step into that role as a ruckman and probably gives us a look that we didn't have last year. So. Bryn's often going to get his first hands to the ball uh, most rough contest, so it gives our inside midfielders that first look, which probably we didn't have last year. Obviously, with Ruben and Huey, they were really good mobile ruckmen, but Bryn's got a different skill set where he can you know, get his hands to the ball and he follows up super well, so really excited to have him on board this year. You play a very prominent role in the leadership group, along with your captain, Matty Jupp, uh, over at East Fremantle. How important is the role of the leadership group to your club, especially after a great premiership year and now having to defend that title against some very strong uh, opposition? Yeah, so we've we've been really, really strong this year. Uh, It's a little bit different because obviously last year we we got to the point where we uh, won a flag and and that's what we were striving to, to get to. Uh, we've just been really strong at, at resetting and making sure we're following the processes um, at what makes us a good footy side. So it's not focusing on the outcome of you know winning games of football and whatnot. It's about making sure that we turn up and and uh, get our processes right. And that's, that's what enables us to win games of footy. So the leadership group has been fantastic, led by Matty Duff again. Um, I'm really excited for another big year. And how determined are you guys to obviously go back to back, you know, there is this old saying of a premiership hangover. You know, it's, we've seen, you know, what happened with Collingwood so far in the AFL. How determined are you guys to sort of continue what uh, you, where you left off and not make sure it's just one and done? Yeah, so just on what I touched on, so it's really just taking it back and, and looking at what makes us a really good side. So obviously you can see with Collingwood and Brisbane in the AFL, there's, so we've gone away from their defensive structures a little bit and, and other teams are, are hunting them and they've both got off to a, a fairly poor start. So we're focusing uh, solely on round one against Hill Thunder, making sure we get our, our structures 
right, our defensive structures especially. Um, and that's what enables us to win games of footy. So, yeah, that's just what we're focusing on moving into this week. And finally, Kyle, before we uh, let you go, uh, the challenge of starting on minus four, obviously as a result of what happened uh, in the uh, off-season and also just before the finals as well, does that add to the pressure a little bit? Obviously, we start uh, a little bit behind the eight ball in regard to the point with, with what went on last year, but it, it doesn't take away from our focus points. Obviously, that's been said and done, and, and we've been handed that verdict where we've uh, been deducted some premiership points, but we're focused on winning games of footy, so that's not going to add any pressure to, to what we do. Um, we're just focusing on what's at hand, um, and that's just Hill Thunder this week and then moving forward to the next couple of games. Great approach by you, Kyle, and the team as well. We wish you all the best for Saturday afternoon in the grand final rematch against Peel Thunder. Thanks for your time, Kyle. All the very best. Good luck, mate. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. That was Kyle Baskerville, the East Fremantle pre- uh, v- uh, vice captain of the reigning premiers who are looking to start off the season strong against Peel Thunder in the grand final rematch on Saturday afternoon. This is Around the Waffle, your go-to football podcast in 2024. Get ready for the ultimate footy experience. Waffle Wonderland starts Easter Thursday, 6pm at Pentanet Stadium, Joondalup. It's Waffle Footy with a wonderland of food trucks, giveaways, DJ and kids activities. Tickets at waffle.com. All right, Ethan, here we go. Let's preview the matches for round one of 2024, and it all begins under the lights of Pentanet Stadium on a historic Thursday night. It is tonight, West Perth and Claremont. Pentanet Stadium, 7-10 tonight is bounced down. And Ethan, I tell you, this modern rivalry has added a little bit more spice with this fact that it's going to be a night game for the first time in history. Absolutely. You think of the 2022 decider and uh, Claremont, yeah, they they were wanting not only to get revenge off that, but also last year, obviously a bit of um, spice left in them. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to it. A night game especially. You don't see it too often no. to the season. So a bit different. I really like it and hope there's a massive crowd there. I like the fact that there's a lot more night games in WAFL football. It just adds to the competition. It really refreshes it, as it may seem, because, you know, going to the footy Saturday afternoon is always great, but you have it on a Thursday night to open the season. You've got an absolute banger of a season opener in store and a season for that matter as well. Of course, West Perth, Jason Salisic going to be uh, starting off as league coach, but also... The battle in the midfield, that's also going to be what could be that wins either team the game. Led by Jai Bolton for Claremont, Aaron Black for West Perth. That's going to be the battle to watch tonight. Two stalwarts of the Waffle competition going head-to-head. What more could you want? Um, interesting to see how the new lights fare as well um, at, at Pentanet Stadium. So um, who, who covers for miles down back? That's another question mark I've, I've got as well. They've got Hardesty, who's, who's obviously got the experience uh, that can lead that, that back line, but there's that hole that's going to be a struggle for Claremont to fill up, especially with Tia Miles, who had an explosive season last year at Claremont, was one of their leading uh, defenders for 2023. Very explosive. They're going to miss that a lot this yeah. season. And it's a, a wide ground. I'm looking forward to seeing how the likes of Martin Frederick go. On Frederick, a yeah. He'll, uh, he'll be licking his lips at this game. Just seems like the perfect occasion for him. Yeah, that big ground's really going to help uh, Frederick. You know, he's got great turn of speed when he's got the ball in his hand. Going from defence into attack, Claremont's transition game often very, very good and very polished as well. That could really spark a few headaches for West Perth. If uh, Claremont, if they get the ball deep in defence, their transition game is going to be absolutely seamless. So they'll give West Perth a really good fight to, on uh, tonight. Yeah, look out. It's, uh, it's uh, all set to be an exciting game. No doubt about it. Tip for your game. Who's going to win tonight, this season opener? I'm going for the away side. I think Claremont. Going for Claremont? Yeah, I think. Um, I just think they're hungry. I think they've still got that burning desire in them to to obviously win the flag. And in order to do that, you need to start the season well. So I'm, I'm tipping them to win it away from home. But I think it's going to be a beauty. I think it's going to be tight. You say Claremont are hungry. I say West Perth are even more hungry. I'm going to say West Perth. I mean, they want to back up their six straight wins to finish off last season. They've got a new coach. They've still got, you know, that experience. But like you said on Tuesday... Of course, they are getting a year older. They're getting towards the end of their careers, but they're still playing to the best of their abilities. You talk about Aaron Black, Luke Meadows, Tyler Keitel, and some of the good, some of the young kids that have really stepped up last year, especially in the second half. But also, you got um, Hinder wearing the number fifty twos, good in and under midfield, could play a little bit up forward as well. Connor West, that arrival coming back from the Eagles uh, to Falconland, I reckon that's going to be a good spark for the Falcons. I think the Falcons may just have a little too much for Claremont, but I reckon it'll be only a kick in it. It'll be a yeah. ripper. 
What a way to start the season that would be. Oh, no better way on a Thursday night than uh, at Pentanet Stadium. You can catch that game on the AFL app. You can also catch every game on the AFL app in season 2024. Next game, we begin the Saturday action. It is Peel Thunder taking on East Fremantle in the grand final rematch. As Kyle Baskerville alluded to as well, East Fremantle, despite starting behind the eight ball or the four ball in this case, being minus four rather than minus eight, it doesn't change their focus. Their approach is still going to be ruthless, aggressive, and they've got the depth to do it against the Peel Thunder side, who are going to be hindered by the early run of injuries. They will be. They played round one last year, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Last year, as well, so. Peel Thunder came from uh, 21 points down to snatch it by four points. Yep. East Freo won't want that to happen again. No. So that will be still fresh in the memory, one would have thought. Um, yeah, high expectations on, on both sides. Looking forward to, I guess, the battle of the, both forward lines as well. I think that's not where we won and lost, but, you know, if they can kick straight and obviously impact when the ball is deep in 50. Um, yeah, I think uh, East Freo, you'd have to say, are the favourites for this mm. one, despite being away from home. Yeah, East from Andalorf often have a bit of a tough time when playing at Lane Group Stadium over there in Mandra. They did lose their last couple of games, two of their last three in the round one uh, opener over there in Mandra. But of course, they have gone to five different places uh, when playing uh, their games. They've been to the Wacker last year. They started out in Mandra. They went to uh, Geraldton, Fremantle Oval, and then Optus Stadium as well. So they've become a bit of the journey teams over the last uh, 12 months as, uh, as far as WAFL is concerned. But uh, the battle of the forward lines, like you said, is going to be absolutely critical. You've got the likes of Collier, uh, who can play a little bit up forward. He's that small forward. He can kick a couple of bags of goals. Um, also, Tabiner as well, who can take some big marks, uh, obviously, as that number one tall and you also got Freeze from Mandel, Montalban, Cody Leggett as well. He was magnificent in the final series, also in the final stages of the regular season. So that forward line for both sides is going to be absolutely critical for uh, East from Mandel and Peel Thunder. Question is, which forward line is going to deliver them the win? I think uh, East Ferro will get it done. Another name like Johnny Marsh. The Marshy. The he, he shows... Um, yeah, I think East through will get the job done. I don't think it's going to be a belting by any stretch of the imagination. No, not at all. But um, I think, you know, maybe three, four goals. I think East through will get the job done. I'll say East from Mandel as well to start off their premiership defence on a winning note over there at Lane Group Stadium. Okay, third game of the round. It is at half past two on Saturday. It is South from Mandel hosting East Perth at Fremantle Community Bank Oval. This one in some sort of sporting terms, could be the sleeper hit of the round. Could be the sleeper hit. And the reason I say it is because East Perth, of course, all-out attack, great midfield depth, the best in the competition. South Fremantle, keen to improve. They've got some experience back. They've also got some good youth in that forward line as well. So also, that midfield battle is going to be one to watch tremendously over there at Freo Oval. Hammer time. Oh, yeah. Sh- Schumacher, Schumacher uh, as we said in the first episode, um, yeah, Brayshaw, like, like, the list goes on, really. The depth that they have, um, yeah, they're going to be tough to beat. But you never know, like, you know, you Sloith back in there, um, Donaldson dangerous up forward. So, uh, Bulldogs, their record at home is an interesting one as well. Mm, especially yeah. last year, their form was suspect at home. I mean, losing to sides like West Perth and even Perth as well. So, they did struggle a little bit at home. But uh, I reckon they could, you know, really give in a really good performance against East Perth on Saturday. Yeah, and I think East Perth don't mind travelling as well. No. So um, I don't think that that phases them one bit. So, yeah, East Perth, uh, heavy favourites. But South Fremantle, you know, they could give them a scare in front of their, their faithful. Especially when you've got a good midfield uh, for South Fremantle. Dragovic, Florenka, uh, to an extent Tom Blenchenden as well. Yeah. We uh, we didn't mention them on Tuesday because we were looking at their forward line as one of their big keys. But just behind that forward line, that midfield depth is also very good. Blenchenden can rack up the footy. Dragovic and Florenka to, uh, can do likewise as well. But also the physical pressure that's there for East Perth. South Fremantle have got to counter that by taking the ball out wide and ridding East Perth of that physical pressure on the footy. Yeah, and you mentioned those, I guess, ball carriers, like off half-back, Toby McQuilkin is another mm. name that comes to mind. He's really um, come on leaps and bounds in the waffle. Um, he's another one that's going to add to, I guess, that half-back slash midfield um, carry out of out of the back back 50. Yeah, that, that dynamic between the back line and midfield for South Fremantle is going to be critical. Same can be said with East Perth as well. You talk about Angus Schumacher. In fact, in uh, one of their previous meetings, uh, Schumacher had 38 disposals in a winning side, so he can get the 30, 40 disposals for fun, no doubt about that. But up forward, Mitchell Schofield tipped to have a big season. Sam Van Diemen up forward. Those two up forward are going to play such a key role in, uh, in this East Perth side. I mean, they're a very high-scoring team, 
And if Schofield and Van Diemen can get on the board early, that's going to take the game right out of South Fremantle. So a good start is going to be pivotal for East Perth on Saturday. Van Diemen, Mercurial is probably oh, the word I'd use. I oh, yeah. He commentated that outstanding goal that he kicked last year from the boundary. Um, and you mentioned their forward line. I feel like even if their forward line doesn't fire, their midfielders hit the scoreboard. You look at Schumacher, like Brayshaw, Croden, like they always kick goals and that's what you need from your midfield. So obviously they're going to be relying more on their forward line, but I feel like others can step up if the guy like a Schofield potentially do get shut down. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, the likes of Schofield and Van Diemen can be backed up by their midfield if the Bulldogs' back line can shut them down tremendously. But as far as a winner is concerned in this game, I'm going East Perth. I mean, especially if that midfield complements the forward line so brilliantly, it's going to make it difficult for the South Fremantle back six. On the same page with you, yeah, I think uh, East Frio should get the job done, and I think they will. All right, let's go to the fourth game on Saturday. It's at 2.30, Steel Blue Oval, Swan Districts in front of their loyal fans. Uh, their 19th man, as uh, some may call it in the WAFL, their loyal fans, they're going to host the West Coast Eagles at 2.30 on Saturday afternoon. Lots of questions on both sides, more so the Swans heading into this season because a lot of close games they lost. But, of course, some say it's a bit easy on paper against the West Coast Eagles, but it's a bit of an unknown. It is. I think both these sides should be going into the game thinking we can seriously get our season off to a fly here. Um, I think if it's an early call, but I think if the Eagles are going to win any games, this is the one that they'd pencil in straight away. Yeah, absolutely, especially when you've got, you know, like I said, so many questions over both sides. Swan Districts, you know, they've got a very good back line and midfield. Their forward line didn't compliment them as much uh, in 2023. They struggled a lot for goals. They struggled a lot for good runs. They need to get a good run of play going against an Eagles side who are as about as unpredictable as anything, you know, based on what they can fit into their 22, you know, who's going to go onto the field, especially with the run of injuries and also the lack of experience that's there. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, a bit of the unknown, but um, yeah, these sides, uh, I guess, I don't know we predicted them both of us to be at the bottom of the ladder, but that doesn't mean this game won't be uh, competitive and I think it could be quite um, high scoring as well. Well, you think so, especially when you've got a good Swan Districts forward set up. So I've got a couple of other good options up forward as well yeah. that can deliver and they're not only, they can play a good tall game, they could also play that small ball game to great effect as well. And a player that I just can't speak highly enough from Swan Districts, Aiden Clark. Clarky, He's yes. Just, Honestly, like he, his, his year last year was underrated. I don't know how he got more votes than a Sandover, to be honest. I'd love um, to know. He, he got, I think, low teens, if I'm if I'm. Should have got more, to be honest. Um, I mean, he was pretty stiff on some of those games that he missed out on. Yeah, just uh, obviously his hair captures uh, your attention <laughs> straight away, but um, the long sleeves as well. But, um, yeah, just a, a magnificent footballer. And, um, you know, if they can help him out a lot in the midfield as well, you don't want to shoulder... You don't want him carrying too much of the loads, but I think Jesse Turner could help out with that. Turner, of course, an absolute ball magnet for the Swan District's midfield. He can gather the 35 possessions every day of the week. His midfield his midfield ability, his gather, his delivery is going to be such a key for Swan Districts. I reckon that whole midfield would be relying on him to perform as well, and that, and he and the others can provide that great backup. Yeah, uh, he just leads by example. He does. That. Who wins? I think Swan Districts get off to a flyer to start the year. I reckon Swans will win it as well, but... Uh, Tony, I reckon the Eagles can provide a close contest here. I reckon they can be very competitive. It depends, however, on the 22 that's there on the field for the Eagles. And I think there's another one that uh, we almost forgot to mention, Jarvis Pina. Correct. If, if you like Pina Coladas getting caught in the rain, as they say, but if you like Pina Coladas and him getting the ball off half back and delivering to the midfield, he is one of the more efficient in the competition, I mean, and very spectacular as well. He's going to play that leading role in the back line for the Swans this season. Yep, uh, obviously spent time at Fremantle, mm. Peel Thunder. Um, just, yeah, just uh, his ability to hit targets, like in, um, he's very composed, I, f I find. He's very composed and always finds the right option, but at the same time, he can take the game on when he needs mm. to. Absolutely. It should be a close game over there at Steel Blue Oval up in Bassendine. We've both gone the Swans. <laughs> And the final game in round one of the WAFL season is a day-nighter, 4-10 at Lath Lane on Saturday, Perth taking on Subiaco. It's another leap into the unknown, isn't it, Ethan, for Perth with these new recruits? Leap into the unknown against the full-strength Subiaco side that are looking to elevate even further in 2024. Absolutely. I think these two, another team, uh, two teams who versed each other last year, and it was a bit of a seesawing affair, but Subiaco came out on top, and I expect them to do the same this year. Looking forward to a big turnout at Laugh Lane as well for a 410 fixture. Um, Quartermain has been suspended 
for Perth. So, yeah, yeah, he um, got suspended for a gesture he made on uh, Zach Main wearing yeah. as well during the preseason, so he'll miss this game. It's a bit a big blow for the Demons as well, especially when you consider that Quartermain was their leading forward for Perth. I mean, he's a goal kicking machine on his best day. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to the the midfield battle of Clark and the Hickmots and uh, Foley when he goes in there against likes of Constable and Sam Simpson. I think that's where the game will be won and lost. Absolutely, I think that's going to be an absolutely terrific game, especially with that midfield battle. So important, and and, and in, the, in the ruck as well, that's going to be so interesting for Subiaco because who's going to cover for Zach Clark, who's now left the club? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think they've got a better list than last year with the people they've been able to bring in, but at the same time, Zach Clark, I mean, just it was outstanding what he was able to do, and you can't you can't just replace it overnight. No, you, you cannot. You've got to find a perfectly developed ruckman who can, you know, fill those shoes of Zach Clark. And they are big shoes to fill, you know, Zach Clark. Having coming over from Victoria to go back to Subiaco and bolster that side and get them back into the five is a hell of an effort. Now that he's gone, who's going to cover? That's going to be the question that will be answered on Saturday afternoon. Absolutely. And I like the, the Subiaco back line as well. I look at someone like Galen Savini. He's just mm. improved out of sight uh, with his, I guess, marking and just defence in general. Um Expect him to have another big year, and um, the Lions just elevate in twenty twenty four in general. And I think that starts on on Saturday. I also expect Sam Stubbs to have a big year as well. The Perth Ford, one of the most spectacular Fords in the WAFL, can mark him right out of the blue, especially in the air as well. He's a good player when he's in the air as well. When that ball is in his path and there's a big pack, he can crash through it and take a great mark and kick a couple of good goals as well. Loves the celebration, doesn't oh, he? Will you ever believe it? He loves the yeah. celebration. He is he, one of the best goal celebrators in the WAFL competition. Who wins on uh, on Saturday afternoon? Uh, Subiaco for mine. I'm going the other way. Okay. Oh, I'm saying Perth. I'm calling an upset. I'm not afraid to call an upset here. I reckon Perth can do it with the new recruits. Charlie Constable in particular, definitely the biggest of the season. It's just going to be about how he, like many of the others that have come over from interstate, that performs on the day against this very strong Subiaco side. Subiaco, that, they, won't get, they won't get thrashed by any means. I'm not saying that. But Subiaco, I don't know. There must be something in the air for Perth that is, sees them destined to take this opening game. I, I feel something. Peter German against his former side. Look out. It's yeah, how about ball, that? Ball, oh, yeah. Ball. Peter German coaching against his old side, of course, as Coach Subiaco to premierships in the 2000s. It is going to be a big, big round, of course. All the games you can see live, free, and in full on the AFL app. It is going to be a banger opening round for season 2024. Win. Win. Almost a win. Win. It's win-win at the Waffle. Great footy, food and entertainment. Find out more at waffle.com.au. Now, Ethan, before we wrap up for today's show and uh, jet off to the footy for round one, we're going to uh, give the listeners a, a few glimpses of what we're going to have in store for season 2024. Of course, at the end of every round to start things off, we'll have the Around the Waffle Player of the Year. That is back for 2024. And uh, I reckon you're going to love this, Ethan. Five, four, three, two, one votes. One lot of those votes. And the most votes after round 21 will be declared the Around the Waffle Player of the Year. I like it. Just like the old Sando with the five votes. Yeah, but of course, only one lot this time, rather than the four lots of five, four, three, two, one. So it adds to the competition. Of course, Aiden Clark of Swan Districts won that last year. Who's going to take it out this year? Well, you'll find out after twenty-one rounds later on in the season. Also, we're going to give something new as well. Uh, we're going to have something in the works during the year. We're going to have our play of the week as well uh, for our fans on YouTube as well. We'll have that, and also we'll have a segment uh, for the fans as well. It's called Waffle About, and we'll ask uh, the fans before each week of episode. Ask us, uh, what do you think of uh, the Waffles goings on at the moment? What do you think of your favourite team? What do you think of your favourite player? How are they performing? If they're dropping off or if they're getting back into form? Let us know on our socials and uh, we'll uh, give uh, the fans an opportunity to have their questions mentioned on the air. Yep, get them in, people. Absolutely. Get those questions in, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Ethan, can't wait for round one tonight. Great work as always and uh, I'll see you at the footy. Likewise, Paul. Keen, mate. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And listeners, we thank you for your company on this first week of Around the Waffle. Of course, it all begins tonight. Pentanet Stadium at 7.10 between West Perth and Claremont. And don't forget, Waffle Wonderland as well. I've been playing you a couple of those Waffle Wonderland promos during uh, the breaks in the WAFL episodes. That is, of course, at West Perth and Claremont at Pentanet Stadium tonight as well. And we'll give you a glimpse just before we wrap up of next week's WAFL Wonderland. That'll be at Sullivan Logistics Stadium. Get to Waffle Wonderland at Sullivan Logistics Stadium in Leaderville from 2pm Saturday. 
Watch East Perth take on Swans. It's Waffle Footy with a wonderland of food trucks, giveaways, DJ and kids activities. Tickets at waffle.com.au. Oh, you better believe it, Waffle Wonderland, it is going to be off the charts. That's it for tonight's edition of Around the Waffle. We'll see you at Pentanet Stadium for the season opener and on Tuesday when we review the opening round. See you then.